keen to uh, organise a tertiary composing competition for many years. Um, so we've been looking for ways to do it. And we were talking to the various universities in particular last year, and maybe even the year before, to try and get their involvement in the project. And um, yeah, it looked like it was all going to come together for this year, which of course is Lilburn Centenary. So we thought it was a great opportunity to try and um, connect it to that celebration, which we did. Celebrating Lilburn is what we've called it, and each of the compositions has to be inspired by or uh, respond to the life or work of Douglas Lilburn. seems to have responded in a, in a really different way and we're, we've been fascinated by that looking through and each composer gave us a, a program note explaining a little bit about how the, uh, the work uh, referenced Bill Byrne, you know, his, his life or his work uh, and it's been really interesting I and mean, we, we of course can hear uh, little elements, motivic elements, that, you know, musical um, elements that are in there but uh, some composers uh, dove into the uh, electroacoustic uh, material that Lil Burn left us with and, uh, and, and then arranged it for us. Uh, and we'll be hearing all of these different types of responses to the brief. Well, we had 41 scores submitted to us at the beginning of the competition, and these came from all around the country. So we had Auckland University, Waikato, um, New Zealand School of Music, University of Otago, and Canterbury University as well. And what was great about the involvement of, with the universities is that it was built into the curriculum for the students at whatever level they were. So we had um, first year students all the way through master's students and, and doctoral, and doctoral yeah, yeah. who were kind of just leaving, um, leaving their studies. So a huge range of experience in terms of composition, the skill, the, the actual craftsmanship but also the maturity of ideas and presentations. So what we did with those 41 works was then culled it down to 18 that we thought were particularly interesting, and then we workshopped it at um, three of the universities. So Otago and Canterbury um, came together in Christchurch. Then we had one in Wellington, and then the Auckland and Hamilton students came together in Auckland. And we talked through, it was mostly coming at it from a performer's perspective, so what were the issues that we faced in literally getting the music off the page, whether it was enharmonic spellings or awkward spacing or just unclear issues. And then we, well we started by performing each of those works so that the, the composers could hear them in, in performance and then we talked about things that we might change or suggestions that we had and got feedback and had a bit of a dialogue. In, in general, what we, what we find ourselves repeating to a lot of the composers in this competition is clarity. Clarity is what we're looking for. Clarity of your intention. Um, and that's what we've found so far is when we get to speak to the composers, it's what, it, it's what the conversation is generally about. Um, there may be some, some vagaries in the, um, in the score that we just need clarity on. Sometimes those vagaries are there intentionally, and that's awesome. Um, that can be described though, you know, you, you could make a note saying this is intentionally, I'll leave this to you, to, you know, to the performer's interpretation. All of those kinds of things um, will be really helpful, specifically because we might have the opportunity to talk to you, but if, if your piece becomes, you know, very well loved by audiences, people around the world are going to want to play it, going to grab the score, and they're not going to get a chance to talk to you, maybe. So all of the information has to be right there, clearly on the score. It's to do with ha laying our fingers down and feeling intervals. We see intervals and we feel them, but if they look and feel different to what they are, it's quite challenging. So we've, we've notated those points as well. So what, what you can hear already is that a lot, I mean, all of our comments mm -hmm. are gonna be about our uh, relationship to your score as players. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we're not pretending to be uh, composing tutors or composers or anything like that. We're, we're coming as performers and, and uh, responding to, to your music with our taste. Not all those harmonics are going to be producible on different pianos. So you kind of like, I, I've got a smaller um, instrument where the, where the um, strings cross at different points. So the G, for example, it's like I'm really literally having to put my hand underneath the strings and I can barely get it. Um, so, and in that case, and I'm not even sure if I could get the E1 on my instrument, but would you consider offering alternatives? Yeah, or sort of if, you, and again, maybe that's just something in the note. If if these particular um, partials cannot be produced, that this one would be acceptable, or whether it's, it's something that you have to come onto the keys for rather than the. Yeah, I'd be interested for specifics from you about where the, the process happens. Yeah, it's, it's different. different every piano, every, piano, every, piano, every, every piano. make of piano has <laughs> themes in the right in different places. So, so whenever you do inside piano stuff. Yeah, like sometimes Sarah has to do a strum, but there's a there's bar, a bar in the way <laughs> on some pianos. So <coughs> to have an alternative yeah, version, like a, a maybe a descriptive alternative. Yeah. Like yeah, right. Choose, yes. Choose an alternative. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Exactly. Something like Sometimes when you you know when you're having used to hearing it on a smaller piano or, or yeah. but just the live experience of a nine foot grand is <laughs> yeah because yeah. it doesn't it doesn't strike me as a a part that's overwritten for the piano These, it's not I, I, mean, I don't think it overwhelms the, the strings no. in any way yeah. yeah and then they went away and revised if they felt it necessary um, some had quite major tweaks some had you know there wasn't much that they felt needed changing. And so from those 18 works we then selected the winners for tonight's performance and we did that in conjunction with composer Kenneth Young. Uh, we felt it was important to bring in a composerly viewpoint as well and not just selecting it from a performance um, standpoint. Yeah. Lil Burn means a lot to me uh, personally. I, I remember uh, playing his uh, orchestral work, works, uh, small chamber works as well as the larger ones when I was at high school and it really struck me that this was music from New Zealand and possibly I hadn't played much other music from New Zealand so it was very important to me um, as a young musician and yeah so I, I, I feel a real link to him and in terms of our love of New Zealand music I think a lot of a lot of it's come through, um, in a way, his encouragement through through his connection to all the composers. And when he was alive, he was so supportive of uh, the composing community and building that community. And so we have a huge amount to uh, that we owe to him um, in terms of this amazing world that we're living in now, uh, with all the commissioning that we do and the performing of New Zealand work. So I feel that there's a really strong connection. To Melbourne. I think similarly, um, probably like many young um, New Zealand musicians, uh, my introduction to Lilburn was through school circuit music and listening to and studying the Aotearoa Overture and it was such an iconic sound, I mean you just, and then having to write papers on what it is about his sound and you know it's interesting in coming to these compositions 
and um, from these young composers and and hearing them reflect on his talking about a search for a language or for a New Zealand identity and whether there is a single voice of New Zealand composition, um, I think he argued that there probably wasn't and that you know there's so many different influences in, in the country and I think that stands true today that there is such a diverse, wonderful range of composition styles and that mm. every composer seems to find or to be encouraged to find their own voice and not to um, conform to any particular mm. style or sound. So I think that's a really important legacy. Mm. And then of course getting to know some of the piano works um, through my studies as well. Just, yeah. Yeah, similarly, uh, the first New Zealand chamber work that I played was uh, Douglas Lilburn's um, String Trio. Uh, I played uh, in, a, in the National uh, you know, Chamber Music Competition. And of course, you know, we did youth orchestra and that kind of thing. Mm. Um, you come across his music a lot growing up. Um, but of course, he didn't leave us a piano trio. Mm. Uh, and so <laughs> this is kind of, it's, it's been a, a sad thing, I guess, for us in, in, a, in one little way. This competition is, is a step towards kind of writing that wrong and that um, the, these composers can kind of begin to fill that gap by writing a work that might uh, lend a glance to Wilburn's work or his life. Mm.